Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm coming at you with another Here Comes the Bride video and this one is all about choosing your venue. So I have chose my venue about two or three months ago and um, I will be inserting some clips like maybe vlog style or just I'll do some talk overs because I don't know exactly how loud it will be there when I go tomorrow to see it again um, and do like a little walk through with my family. So I'm not sure, but I'll definitely get some footage for you guys when I'm there um, and I'll put it into this video. But I did want to talk about how I got to that point, how I found my venue, what steps you should take to finding your venue and um, all that good stuff kind of depending on no matter where you live, just like what are some tips that I would definitely take. So. First things first is to find the time of year that you want to get married. I think that that was where we started first and I knew that I wanted to have like a late, late summer, early fall wedding. Um, so that was something that was super important to me. Um, but you have to just pick what time of the year speaks to you. And then the next thing that was the most important for me that really, really helped me eliminate some of the options in my area, which there aren't a ton that I loved. I mean, there are a lot, but they're not a lot that I loved. Um, and that was to get your guest list together. Now, the reason that this is so important, and I know that you won't know pricing of your venue and things like that, and so that could factor into it, but at least get a ballpark of what you think you want. Because if you want to have 300 guests and you fall in love with a venue that only supports 150, do you really want to knock out that many people from you know your guest list? You have to kind of make that decision. And so we knew that we wanted our venue to at least hold up to like 230, 245 people. That way, if we're having a 200 person wedding, which is where we think we're going to come in at, we have some room to grow. Um, so be it that things change or that we want to add more people or that, I don't know, anything happens, we want to put something in the room that takes up a lot of space. It could comfortably seat that many people in the room. So we started doing our research. Um, some suggestions I have for you are like Wedding Wire is a really great, The Knot is great. And then just doing research in your area, looking up, say you live in New York City, um, hashtag New York City wedding or hashtag New York City bride and looking through some hashtags on Instagram and seeing the types of things that you want and remembering what's important to you. So I really wanted a light, bright, clean, airy wedding. Um, and I at first really thought that that meant outside um, for my reception and under a tent and over the water and blah, 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 blah. But then I was looking at my options and there weren't a ton that fit me and that fit my budget and that fit what I was looking to accomplish. So I started looking at to hotels and other spaces and things like that and then narrowed my decisions down from there. I would go through, I would see the availability that they have. If they didn't have the time frame I wanted, nixed it. If they didn't have, um, if it didn't look pretty, I definitely wanted a really pretty unique space that wasn't overdone. I didn't want to get married at, um, I don't know, in like a ballroom that just didn't fit my style that I would have to spend so much money covering up the space to make it look something specific for me. So that was something that was really important to me. So I spent a lot of time finding a space that I loved and that was basically I could just take as is. And I'm obviously gonna have decor in my wedding, but I didn't wanna have to drape the walls, cover the floors, get up all that crazy stuff after I was already paying a certain amount of money. Now I do understand that sometimes that is what it is. It's the only options that you have and you might have to do that, but that's the route I went first. So I kind of took a wish list of things that I wanted and then I worked backwards from there. Then the next thing I would suggest doing is definitely go look at them. Pictures online cannot do things justice. Even my venue that I ended up picking, I was sending pictures to my planner and she had never seen it before and she was like, when we went and saw it the first time together, she was like, oh my God, the pictures did not do this justice. So you definitely want to, sorry, I'm always touching my hair. So you definitely want to go see it and make sure that it is what it is. And if that means if you're having a destination wedding, I know it can be really, really hard. Um, or if you're getting married out of town, but I would suggest at least once going to see it because the worst thing that could happen is like on your big day, walking into something and it's not what you hoped it would be. And it can eliminate a lot of the stress, I think. So I would definitely recommend doing that. Um, so then we found the space. So we're getting married um, in Baltimore and I found the space and I'll be showing all that in a little bit here. Um, and I... I'm so happy that we kind of went through all of those steps and really took the time to say like, this is what I wanted and this is what I don't want because it ended up that we only chose between three different places. So there was three that came to the end that we went and saw and we put all the pricing together. We got all the 
you know, numbers from them, we got the spaces from them, available dates, all that good stuff, and then we got to pick. So it made the process a lot, lot easier than it could be, and we started with a list of like 20, and we narrowed it down just by crossing off things from our wish list. And I really, really loved that because I wasn't overwhelmed with choices, and I really went in feeling confident that I would find something in the three that I had. Now, everybody's different, whether you could be getting married in a backyard, you can be getting married at a church and you need to find something local to that, you might be getting married on site at your place, um, but definitely make sure that you love the options that you have um, before picking all that stuff. So find out what's the most important. So if the church is most important to you, then just look in places around that church. If you want to get married on the water, list all the places on the water near where you want to be and then work backwards from there. So whatever is at the top of your list, make sure that's where you work backwards from. And you always keep that in mind when making choices. That way you're always happy with the choice that you made because it came from the place that you're the most excited about. So... For me, um, I wanted somewhere that had a beautiful, beautiful reception space, whether that being a tent, being outside, being inside, and we found this beautiful space at a hotel that has beautiful dark cargo floors and these gorgeous 35 foot ceilings with like white trim and everything is white and beautiful and exactly how I wanted it to look. So um, that kind of worked there. So then the, um, Second most important part to me was actually the ceremony site. Um, I knew that there was parts of the ceremony that are super important to me, but I could have those anywhere. But um, the site that we're gonna get married at is actually the same hotel and on the same property, which is wonderful for me. That was something I was really, really hoping to be able to accomplish. That way we could eliminate the cost of transportation and different things like that. So whatever is something that's important to you, just make sure that you keep that in mind. I love the space that we're getting married. It's on the water, it's outside, it's beautiful. We're gonna get married under a beautiful floral arch that I can't wait to design with our florist and I will bring you along through all those plans as well. But make sure you ask a ton of questions when you're going like, are you allowed to bring in any vendors that you want? Um, you know, how many seats is it comfortable to have? Not just how many do we fit? Um, how big can we make the dance floor if we have that many people? You know, different things like that so that you know exactly what you're getting into. Do you have to have lighting brought in? Do they have lighting in there? Do, you know, AV hookups, all that different type of stuff that you're definitely going to need. And then if they're doing catering, you need to know prices. You need to know the price to feed your vendors because you actually have to feed them the day of your wedding. There's so much that goes into it. So make sure you look up like a great wedding checklist or something on Pinterest or online and you bring that with you so you can ask all the right questions. So that is it for how I picked my venue. I'm sorry if this was like a little long-winded, but I will now go ahead and show you of the venue that we picked. I'm not gonna show probably everything because I don't even know if they're gonna let me into the ballroom space. I'm gonna really really try to get in but I'll definitely show you where we're getting married and all that good stuff. So I will cut to that now. Okay so this is the main lobby where you first come in and then there is a nice little courtyard that takes you out and will lead you out to where we're actually going to have the ceremony. So some pictures and things like that will be done here. Um, but it was really, really loud in here, so that's why I'm doing a voiceover. During our wedding, all of this furniture will actually be removed and we'll be getting married right here, which is to the left of the pool. As you see Franco walking down, that's actually where the aisle will be. And then where these lounge chairs are will actually be all of the chairs and then we'll be getting married right there along the water. So it's a really, really beautiful view and we absolutely love it, especially when everything's emptied out. We saw it like that at the beginning of the summer and it is beautiful. So in my opinion, this is the star of the show. This is the beautiful ballroom where our reception will be held. There is like 35 foot ceilings, amazing detailing in the crown molding, really, really dark hardwood floors, and then mainly just like some grays and whites all over and a little bit of accent of gold which you'll see on the back wall i just absolutely love this space we're so 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 excited to decorate it and make it exactly how we want it with tons and tons of flowers which i will be bringing you guys along for all of that um, but it's just really really beautiful and then our cocktail hour before the reception will be held in this outside space so right outside those three doors right here as well as the grand staircase behind this wall Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this wedding bell video. Um, the next one I was thinking that I'm gonna do, cause I'm gonna do try and do one a month, is going to be the how I asked my bridesmaids. So I've already started on their boxes and I will be showing you guys everything that I got, what's going inside of them, and then once I mail them, I will upload that video for you. Um, and if there's anything else specific that you guys wanna see or be brought along for, please let me know and I will make sure to do so. I love you guys so much and I will see you in my next video. Bye.